David Cameron hailed it as a new chapter when he signed the military cooperation agreements with France. But the deals left a string of unanswered questions. The treaties on sharing troops, hardware and nuclear testing cover the next 50 years. James Hurst has been assessing how they'll work in practice. Like their politicians, British and French troops, ships and aircraft are going to have to be able to work together for decades ahead. But how? The new Joint Expeditionary Force will begin training next year, but there's no date to be operational. It won't be a standing force, but one that is at readiness. Who might be in it is still to be decided. Critics are worried about possible language barriers. Unlike NATO, where English is the default, the MOD says this will be decided case by case. I should imagine English will be, as it's been throughout the world, uh, the language which most people use, but French and English can both be used just as within NATO and within the European Union and other organisations. Communication will also need technological agreement. For now, it will also be sorted case by case, but the MOD says shared systems could be developed in future. There are 10 years to sort out shared communication for Britain's new aircraft carrier and planes, but a solution will be needed if we borrow France's in that time. The biggest decision on hardware is sorted, the catapult and arrestor system for Britain's new carrier strike fleet, just like France's. Seven years ago, Britain and France were at political loggerheads over Iraq. Yesterday, David Cameron and Nicolas Sarkozy played down the risk of that happening again. But, if needed, this deal doesn't stop the nations going it alone. Both the United Kingdom and France are perfectly free to involve themselves in a military operation by themselves, just as we do that at the moment. Each nation will keep sovereign control of its assets, though. So, if Britain needed to borrow France's aircraft carrier, say, for another Falklands, the French would have to approve it. Britain, of course, has one other big ally. Some critics are worried about what this will mean to them. The concerns I would have probably would be the same concerns that an American would have, and it's this. Is the United Kingdom making indications that it's going to drop back and run with the fat lads, or is it going to stay up with the front runners? Right now, Britain's forces remain focused on Afghanistan. This new treaty is meant to be a perhaps rapid evolution for what lies beyond that. James Hurst, Forces News. When signing the treaty, David Cameron made great play of British and French troops working together in Afghanistan. Earlier, I spoke to our reporter Will Inglis at Camp Bastion and asked him how news of the treaty had gone down there. Well, Kate, there are early signs of cooperation here on Camp Bastion. There was brie in the cookhouse alongside the usual cheddar at dinner time tonight. Speaking to soldiers based here in Afghanistan, though, there is a lot of talk of cheese-eating surrender monkeys, this phrase coined by the American writer ahead of the Iraq war. Now, whatever your politics on that conflict, the fact does remain that Britain went to war with George Bush's coalition of the willing, and France didn't. And how big is France's contribution to operations there? The French troops aren't just based in Kabul. They have a couple of uh, infantry battalions operating slightly further north. And indeed, French troops took part in Op Mosterak here in Helmand province, mentoring their ANA partners. 